So we can see here we have some images of some patterns here, right? Some some candlestick patterns or bar patterns. However, we want to look at this. Essentially, we have the right. The first bar is going to be you know a, essentially typically what's called a, a thrust bar, right? So we have an up thrust, and then we have a kind of a consolidation bar, you know, in the opposite direction, and then lastly we have another thrust bar like so. You know, so we have a three bar pattern. And then sometimes there might be a four bar pattern. Now the key to this is that we can see the bodies here. Well, actually, Albert said that the high and the low count is, is to be used here, not the body, but the high and the low of the of the candle here. So we're going to monitor the high of of the bar and make sure that the highs are equal, right? So if we're looking at it at an up um, an up thrust pattern here. We want the highs of the bars to all be equal here, right? So, uh, so in the in the four bar pattern, we have three bars here that need to be equal. So we can see this is going to be a pretty strict, uh, stringent condition here. Um, and then of course just the reverse, you know, for a down thrust pattern here. So what we're going to so this is going to require using a bunch of comparison solvers and we're going to compare right the high price of the bars make sure they're equal um you know for both the 3 bar and the 4 bar pattern and then you know and of course the opposite for the down thrust um yeah so we'll use some comparison solvers to make sure these prices match up um and then use bar direction solvers to make sure that we're dealing with an up bar and we have this reversal down bar in the middle, right? And same with the four bar pattern. So we need an up bar, down bar, up bar, and then up bar. All right, so let's create a new logic template here. All right, uh, let's see, so I'm gonna grab, I'll start with a comparison solver. Um, and let's see, and I'll need, I will need some bar direction solvers as well. Um, let's see, actually, I already have a bar direction solver, so let me put this one on here. I'm going to need a couple, a couple of bar direction solvers, yeah. Okay, I'm just getting a couple of things set up here, and then I'll kind of explain what I'm doing here. So, um, <clears throat> all right, let's see. Let's let me start with the comparison solver here. Um, so we're going to use the comparison solver to find these flat, you know, uh, tops here. Basically, find these equal prices here. Right. Make sure all these prices are equal, so that we have this flat top or a kind of flat bottom here, right? So, uh, yeah, let me step, step back. So we're comparing, so if it's, a, if it's an up pattern, um, we're comparing the high price to the low price. And then vice versa, if it's a down pattern, we're comparing the low price to the high price. <laughs> there, I'm sorry, we're, um, sorry. Yep, scratch that. We're comparing the high price to the high price and the low price to the low price. Try not to overthink it. <laughs> Sometimes if you overthink it, yeah, you'll mix yourself up. All right, so let's see here. Um, so this is going to be going to be compare the high, basically one bar back. Uh, we want it equal to the high of current bar. So actually, it's going to be it's actually going to be two bars back and one bar back. All right. So yeah, if we go back on this, yeah, I remember. It. So the the final this final thrust bar is actually going to be bar zero. So this is going back one bar, and then the the first thrust bar is actually going to be the second bar back. So yeah, so we want to look at the high of the second bar back and compare it to the high of the first bar back. All right, so let's set the inputs here to the price type. We'll set them both to the price type there. So for a long, for a long pattern, 
we are analyzing the high. And so for a short pattern, we're analyzing the low. Right. And <clears throat> we can actually, let's modify the name here. There we go. There. <clears throat> Um, and we want to look back. Now, a look back period starts with an index of one. So you can't have a look back period of zero. If you try and put a zero on there, you can see it's going to revert back to a one. So we're actually, to find the second bar back, our look back period is actually going to be three. So remember, one, a look back period of one is the current bar. So we'll set. So you just add an, a one to whatever to a. You add when you're when you're using a period. Um, you always have to add one to how many bars you want to look back. So there we go. So input A, right? That's looking at the high. Two bars back. And input B. That's set these up correctly. We're going to look at the high uh, one bar back. So let's get these prices set in here correctly. All right. So there you go. So so input A is going to be the same as input B. The only difference is the look back period. So that way we can compare two bars back to one bar back. And now the outputs, we need to get these right. So we want to use the A equals B, right? We're looking for these high prices and low prices to equal each other. And there we go. So we're starting to get some output here, right? So there we go. So we have a, right, a bunch of bars where the, the highs are all equal to each other. So we're getting some outputs there. So we're starting to get something here. All right. So, but now, now, we can filter all this stuff out by um, looking at the bar direction, right? So let's take a look at this one here. So this bar direction, right? I named it second bar direction. Oh, actually, I don't want to. I don't want to use the invert here. Um, not for that one. So what we're doing is the start bars ago, actually I need to set that to two. Yeah, we're start, I'm using the start bars ago. So what that does, let me stretch this out here, is it's basically the start bars ago does the same thing as that displacement function that we just, that I just talked about in the previous question here, right? This displacement function in the look back node. So, um, yeah, so the start bars are go. Um, and the reason why they're not the same is we're using NinjaTrader terminology here. So, yeah, so within NinjaTrader, you know, they have a term called start bars ago. go. Um, and essentially what that means is shift the signals forward in time, right? So what that effectively is doing is we're looking at this up bar and its signal gets shifted forward in time on you know two bars two bars forward in time um, or another way of looking at it see it all it all depends on your perspective right when you're when you're coming up with terminology like this so the reason why it's called start bars a go is because in reality what you're doing is if this is the current bar we're looking back we're looking back two bars ago right we're looking back two bars ago so that's why it says bars ago because if we're on this bar during our calculation, then we're we're this bar direction solver is looking back two bars ago, uh, right? So so this up bar, <clears throat> we're getting this up bar output, right on this current bar here. So, all right, so there. So um, going back, right? We want the first thrust bar to be an up bar or a down bar. And then the middle one is in the opposite direction. So what I'm going to do is this bar solver is um, 
let's see, let's let me rename this here. There we go. So that's looking to the second bar back, and this is looking to um, one bar back. There. So now let me set the start bars to go to one. So that way we're looking back one bar. So from here, right? So if this is the current bar, we're looking back one bar, right? And that was an up bar. And so we're getting the output one bar forward, like so. However, we are not looking for an up bar direction. All right, so this is this is going to be an up pattern or a long pattern, right? But this bar, this middle bar here, is in the opposite direction. Um, so, but we need to get a long output because the fi the final result is we want a long signal, right? So we have to reverse the direction, yeah, reverse the output for this down bar, right? So we have to take this this bar direction and reverse the output. So that instead of it giving us a short when there's a down bar, we need it to give us a long output when there's a down bar. So we're going to use the long short modifier. And we're just going to use the default mode, which is to swap, swap the output directions here, right? The swap. So, so if we look at this now, so what we're seeing is when we look back one bar ago, it's an up bar, but we're getting a short out. Uh, yeah, it's an up bar and we're getting a short output. So if we do this, sorry here, let's do this, right? So on this bar, we're looking back one bar ago and it's a down bar, but we're getting a long output. Same thing here. This is a down bar, but we're getting a long output from it. So next, we can join this all together with an AND node. And this will find, uh, so this will find two of the bars here, right? So it'll identify when we have an up bar with the highs equal uh, and then a down bar. And then it'll find a down bar where the lows are equal with an up bar. So we've got part of this pattern um, accomplished. So this should help us find that pattern. Albert, if you know of an instrument and uh, with a date and time uh, when the most recent pattern happened. You know, if you could type that in there, that would help a lot, save a lot of time here. Let's see, almost, um, yeah, here, we almost have that pattern. So we have the beginning, so we have a down bar, uh, a down, yeah, bar with an up bar, the lows are equal, and, <clears throat> right, and we have, and we have this short signal. So at least the first, the, the first two bars <clears throat> occurred, but the, right, but the final bar <clears throat> was an up bar. So let me actually go ahead and just, um, let me grab another bar direction here, connect that in there. That'll actually, yeah, provide some additional filtering. Hmm. There we go. We almost have it. Um, yeah, it's, it's close, but, uh, you know, not quite there because the first bar wasn't quite long enough and we haven't gotten to that part yet. So the last thing I'll, we'll do is we'll add the solvers that are going to check the bar lengths, all right? Because that's, uh, an important part of this pattern is, you know, we need a bar here, um, you know, that's two or three times longer than the middle bar and then the final bar, <clears throat> the signal bar needs to be twice as long, uh, right, as the middle bar there. So, yeah, so we'll get these um, bar lengths in here um, afterwards. 
So, but at least we, we've got something close there. Let's see. All right. Albert's suggesting using a two minute. Okay. So let's switch over to a two minute. Yeah. And um, that might give us some more results here. Well, all right, this isn't, may not be perfect, but it's something I can at least work with. Um, there, I will save that for later to work with. Um, ah, perfect, here we go, finally. Here is a beautiful setup right there, there we go. Okay, so, all right, so we have a nice setup here, and what we need to do is essentially, oh, wow, actually two in a row, look at that. All right, there we go. There's another great setup pattern right there. Okay, good, two right next to each other. And so, yeah, so there we go. And so now we just need to kind of get rid of, uh, right, this, this kind of garbage um, here. So, you know, so we just need to add the rest of the filtering so that we can get rid of, you know, this other other garbage here. And all we're left with are um, these two, you know, perfect patterns here. Mark these with an arrow. And, oh, Albert's saying tails are not important. It's the body. All right, Albert, are you sure? Because in your email, you mentioned using the high and low prices so you specifically told Mike to use look at the high and low not the body but we can easily do that and okay yeah all right we'll go with the body that's not a problem that's easy to do remember guys Bloodhound makes this stuff really easy to, to change things around you know I mean that's the whole beauty of, of Bloodhound is you know you change your mind not a problem you know we can we can change things very quickly here so, all right, so let's open this up here. Um, so if we just want to use the body, <clears throat> then all we need to do is change our, our prices here. Let's see, am I going to lose any of this? Uh, no, I'm not. Actually, both of these patterns work with the wicks and with the body. So, um, all right, we're in luck. All right, so if we don't want to use the wicks, then we just simply change, right, the price. So in this case, um, let's see, it's gonna be the close. The high gets converted to the close and the low um, gets converted to the open, like so. Now let's switch these. Oh, okay, yeah, actually, there we go, so. Um, I think I need to, yeah, let's see, yeah, so it's going to be the close, <clears throat> input A will be the close, and then input B will be both opens, yeah, there we go, there we go, so we just had to get the prices set correctly, all right, so there we go, there's my short signal back, there's my long signal back, and of course we just want to get rid of, um, you know, get rid of this miscellaneous stuff here in the middle like so um so oh actually well depending on depending on the kind of the lengths we're looking for you know we might actually get another signal right here possibly so all right so what we have so far um here let me kind of reorganize this a little bit here so what we have here at the top is basically we're just confirming the bar directions. Right. And then this comparison solver <clears throat> is, is confirming that <clears throat> the bodies are, we have equal bodies here <clears throat> for the first couple of bars, um, right? For the, for the first two bars, yeah. Um, yeah, so now, let's see, the last thing we need to do is just, yeah, uh, is compare the lengths of these um, in relative terms. Um, 
So the way we're going to do that is we're going to use the ATR indicator to do that. Um, so let's see, let's connect that up. There we go. All right, so let me grab a comparison solver and connect this up. I'm not sure exactly of a good name for this solver here, but effectively it's comparing the lengths. You know, we want to make sure that the right looking back two bars. So remember our two bar, that's the beginning. That's the first thrust bar that starts the pattern. And then we're making sure that it's greater than the middle bar, the length of the middle bar here. All right. And we're going to, um, let's see, we're going to use an ATR indicator. Uh, I'm trying to remember exactly how I thought of doing this. Um, yeah, okay. So we're going to take chameleon, actually. So let's see, open up the tools and there's chameleon. So, you know, the way I'm going <clears> to, <throat> the way I'm able to do this um, is with chameleon because chameleon has a scale value here. So I'm going to set the scale value to two. And so what I'm doing is <clears throat> I'm going to first set this up and just say that the first thrust bar needs to be two times the size of the middle bar. And then, and then we're going to use chameleon again to make sure that right the final thrust bar is two times the size of the middle bar here. All right. Yeah, it looks like Albert wants the um, wants these thrust bars to be at least twice the length of the uh, middle consolidation bar there. Um, all right. So yeah. So I'm going to use. I'll just leave the scale value to two. And so what we're going to do is chameleon is going to scale up the ATR indicator. And the ATR returns, right, an average true range. And, the, a, and a range means the range of the bar, the high to the low price, <clears throat> right? So the ATR of a one period ATR is basically the range of that bar, right? It's the range of that bar um, in points. And so I'm feeding, right, the range of uh, a one period ATR into chameleon, and then um, <clears throat> chameleon is gonna scale that up for me, um, right? And so then I can just look at the high, the high value of that ATR. So let's see, or I could look at the close. So remember, so these prices here aren't actually prices anymore. They're going to be values coming from the ATR. So um, I think the high will work. I'll use the close just in case. And what we got here, exception on range. Hmm. Well, let me see if I can just re reload the chart here and get around that. So there we go. All right, all good. All right, let's get back to this. Okay, so so input A basically you know, say oh, and we need to use a displacement here. So we want a displacement of two so we can look back two bars, right? So we're looking back two bars. So this is, yeah, let's stretch this out. So we know what we're doing here. All right, so we're, so let's say, there we go, we're on. So this is our current bar on the chart. So we're looking back two bars and we're getting the ATR value of that bar. Um, right, so again, let's open this up, <clears throat> right? We're getting the, a one period ATR value, which basically just measures the, the high to the low and gives us that range in points. And then we're scaling that up by two, 
So we're using Chameleon's scale to scale that up by two. And then we can compare that to the middle bar, looking back one bar, and get the ATR of that and compare the two. So, all right, so input B will be an ATR, just the raw ATR values. So we're not gonna scale this one up. So a one period, and then set a displacement of one. And then let's make sure our outputs are set correctly here. Yeah, so we want, uh, let's pull this part here, there we go. So yeah, we want A greater than B, um, A greater than B. Um, so remember A, A is basically the ATR, um, it's the ATR of this bar scaled up by two so that we're making sure that the, the range of this bar is twice that of the middle bar and we're looking back and so here we go. Yes, yeah, so we have a long output here because, um, yeah, the range of this is twice the range of this bar here. So, I, yeah, so I'm expecting a long output there. So remember that, so what, we're using the displacement here of two and one. So basically the output on this bar is coming from looking at these these two bars back here. And let's scroll to here. Um, oh, yep. We need to ch change the short output as well. So, so, so when we're comparing lengths, so effectively what this solver is doing is it's comparing bar lengths. And of course a bar length is a non-directional type of condition, right? The length of a bar tells you nothing about the direction of the bar. So we, we actually want a long and short output together because this is just telling us the length of the bar, not the direction. So the fact that we have a, um, a long and short output, right, on, on the final thrust bar is what we wanna see because we know that the length of this bar is half the size of the first thrust bar, right? Or the first thrust bar is twice the length of that middle bar there. So let's go back over here. And where are we? Here we go. All right, so we have an output there. Okay, so that's checking those two bars. <clears throat> and so now um, we need to compare the, the middle bar to the final signal bar or the final thrust bar and do that same type of comparison there. Um, all right, so let's grab another um, comparison solver. And so this time we're gonna check the length of one bar back and make sure it is smaller or less than the length of the current bar, bar zero. Like so, there. Um, all right, so we're just gonna do the same thing again. Let's kind of rinse and repeat. So let's grab the ATR, set it to a one period. All right, so, so input A, that is gonna be the middle bar. So we want that to just be just the ATR. And then the current bar, we want this, a, this bar to have an ATR of twice the size. All right. So um, let's see here. Yeah, so input B, So we need to grab chameleon again, grab chameleon. So we can set the scale value to two. <clears throat> and then we need to nest, take the ATR and nest it into chameleon like so there. Set that period to one 
There we go. And oh, for input A, that needs to be one bar back, so set the displacement to one there. And so input B, right, that has a displacement of zero. So that's going to be the current bar. So it's the current bar that we're using Chameleon to scale the range up by two. Yeah, right. So we're taking this, um, uh, yeah, this ATR value here and scaling it up by two, actually. Uh, I'm just double thinking my math here. Uh, oh, right, right. Okay. Yeah, I did. I did switch things around. Um, yeah, since we're having to do this real work around, it's <clears throat> kind of easy to switch things around. So yeah, yeah. Sorry, I kind of reversed things. So what I needed to do is take the length of the middle bar and scale it up by two. Um, I took this bar and scaled it up by two. So actually, what I did is <laughs> I did this a little wrong. I took this length. And then I scaled it up by two in Chameleon. So I actually made it this length, right? So this bar, yeah, I used Chameleon to scale it up by two. <laughs> so of course the middle bar is going to be shorter uh, than that bar. So what I need to do is take the middle bar and scale it up by two and then compare yeah, the value of this scaled up range to the range of this bar here. So yeah, let, me, let me go in and, and uh, correct that <clears throat> there. So, all right, so I need to get rid of chameleon there and just go, yeah, put an ATR in there. <clears throat> there. And, um, all right, yeah, so input B, that is the middle bar, and I need to take the middle bar and scale it up by two. There. Um, so let's grab Chameleon. Set the scale value to two. And actually, if we're looking for a, a two, we actually need it to be like, We'll just set it to 1.9, and I'll explain why we need to go a little bit less in just a moment here. And let's see, grab the ATR, nest it in there, there. Set the period to 1, all in for Chameleon. Let's look at the close price there. All right. So the reason why Chameleon... Actually, we want we want to set Chameleon's scale value to 1.9. Is if you look at the output here, it says A greater than B, and there's no equal sign in there, right? It's not A greater or equal to B. So in other words, if if this if this middle bar was exactly half the length of the first bar, so if it's half the length, then we scaled it up, then both lengths would be exactly equal, right? Both of these bars would be exactly equal. Um, and so we wouldn't have one bar greater than the other. We wouldn't have one length greater than the other. Right. So, so we need to take chameleon and scale this, this middle bar up just slightly less than two times, right? So that way, if this is half the length when it gets scaled up by 1.9 it'll be slightly smaller than the first thrust bar right the length will be scaled up slightly less than the first thrust bar and then we'll have this a greater than b equation uh, met let's see all right so let's in let's um okay so yeah so there we go um actually this looks a lot better here I notice that there's not not a lot of outputs anymore. Yeah, so this actually looks a little better here. And we still have an output on on our final thrust bar there, so that's good. And we also have the output over here on this last thrust on our down 
last thrust bar down as well. All right, so we know we're, we're in good shape still. Okay, so let's finish this other solver here. And oh, there we go again. All right, let me just refresh this there. Get this going. So let me make sure I've got chameleon in the right spot. Let's see. No, again, I need to take I need to take the middle bar and scale its length up. Scale its length up and then compare it to right the current bar. So let's see here. Yeah, input A, that's that's where it has a displacement of one. So that is that is our one bar back here. So this is yeah, the middle bar is the one I need to scale up. So let's go in here. And let's set up chameleon and put in our 1.9 scale factor. And we're gonna look at the close price of chameleon. And then input B, that's just gonna be just the regular ATR. There, let's set that to a one period. There. Let me just double check input A. Um, I did not nest in. There we go. There. Okay, all right. So let's see, input A, that's our middle bar. It has chameleon in it. And yep, okay. And input B, that's our final thrust bar, and that's just the regular AT, ATR without scaling. Uh, and again, we need to change the short output because actually, no, this time, this time we're looking for the current bar to be have a greater length than the middle bar. So we actually want B to be greater than A this time, right? Remember, so B is is the final thrust bar. A, input A is our middle bar here. So we actually need to <clears throat> reverse these outputs here, right? So we want A to be less than B. So remember this middle bar is input A and our final thrust bar is input B. So we're going to reverse these like so. Yeah, so we're comparing the length of this bar to this one. And we'll get an output if this bar is, you know, two times the size. And so this bar was two times the size of that. And if we look, right, this bar was not twice that. You know, none of these bars are twice the previous one. So this bar here was not twice that one. So, yeah, so we're not getting any output. Oh, here we go. So we can see this bar is twice the length of the previous bar, so we're getting an output. So there, kind of helps us confirm everything looks is looking good. <clears throat> Same thing here, right? This bar is clearly twice the length of the previous bar, so we're getting an output here. And let's go, go back, just do some more checking. And yeah, this bar here looks twice the length of the previous one. Yeah. Now, there is one one thing to note here, which is the ATR uses the high and the low of the bar. It's not using the bar body. So, <clears throat> when we're doing this length comparison, it's the high to the low not the bar body right so if you truly you know if the intention of this pattern is to purely and only look at the body of the bar then you'll need a custom atr that looks at the body prices and and um ignores and yeah and doesn't use the wick the high and low prices but it uses the open and close prices you yeah. know all right, uh, let's let's refresh our chart. There we go. Okay, so we have our 
bar lengths um, being compared here. And let's, let's name this and node here. So this is the three bar uh, pattern. And let's see here what happened. Um, hmm, okay, good. So this kind of highlighted something that we're missing, um, which is maybe, I mean, I guess looking at this image, um, I guess we need the, the close of this last thrust bar to be, you know, Quite a bit higher than the the middle consolidation bar, and well, I know it's kind of subjective, but we can add uh, another solver here that will make sure that the yeah make sure that the close is a certain amount higher than the previous bar. <clears throat> so let's do that here. Let's grab another comparison. And all right, again, let's set these, let's set the input types to price. So let's see here. So we want the close. We're going to compare the close. Close to the open of the previous bar. And I'm just wondering if, if I could modify this existing solver, but no, it's looking back too many bars. Yeah, I need, okay, ignore that. We need, yeah, I do need a new solver here. All right, so let's see. We're comparing the close to the open. So input B, I'm gonna set that to the open price. Like so, and that needs to be a look back period of two. So we can look back one bar. And so now we're gonna use this difference here. So, and this time we can actually, this time we can actually use the ATR difference. So, um, and set the period to one. Actually, I think, let's see. Yeah, actually, I think we need something like actually point, point 0.5. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's the period. Sorry. There we go. The value is point 0.5. Yeah. There, like so. All right. Now, the reason why we're using 0.5 is, remember the the ATR the ATR period is set to one, so that means the ATR is going to give us the length of this thrust bar, but we don't need the close to be one whole length of this th thrust bar higher. We need this. You know, just from judging from this image, right, the close of this bar needs to be half the length higher than the previous bar, right? So we take this, so we take the ATR length of this bar and cut it in half. And so we're comparing right from the open of, of the middle bar, you know, going half an ATR higher to the close of, of the thrust bar here. Right. <clears throat> so, and of course, that's subjective. So you can go in here and, you know, modify, you know, this this ATR value here um, to whatever you know you, you want it to be. But basically, we can see here that, you know, right, it got rid of. There's there's no output here on this bar. Right. So if we take, if we take Right, 
the signal and then add this blast filter in there. There we go. It got rid of that signal there. there. And let's name this here before we go get going too far. There we go. <coughs> so basically this is measuring the thrust bar's closed distance. Something like that. All right, let's go back to the chart. <clears throat> All right, let's take a look at this. Yeah, I guess technically this is correct because we're using the bodies. So yeah, we had a thrust bar, then we had a doji, and then another thrust bar. Yeah, so there we go. Technically that's correct. Adjusting for the bodies. All right, let's see what else we got. There we go, let's take a look at this. Um, yeah, all right, thrust bar, basically no body. Um, and then another thrust bar. Cool. So, um, yeah, down bar, no body, um, and then, yeah, another down bar. So technically, it's correct. So maybe you know, might want to add some minimum, minimum um, body lengths to this. You know, that way you get rid of these... Um, Let's see, what is this? Oh, yeah, that's only one tick. Yeah, so these bodies are only one tick. So if you wanted to, you know, we could add a um, length of body confirmation. And let's go back here. Here we go. Let's delete everything. There we go. So, yeah, there we go. There's um, some good ones there. Yeah, so if we wanted to add kind of like uh, that's add a check, you know, maybe kind of check one of these bars, like we could check the 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 final, the signal bar length, or we could check the first thrust bar length, or we could check the middle bar uh, length or something like that. Um, we, you know, probably we could just check one of them. Um, I'll check the first bar length, because um, the middle bar probably doesn't matter if it's a doji or not. So I'll check the first the first thrust bar there. We'll check that length and make sure it meets a, a minimum length. Yeah. So let's open this up. And this is one of those times where we can use the bar length solver. Uh, well, it all kind of depends on what we want to measure. If we want to measure the, the body length, yeah, then we'll need a comparison solver. But if we want to measure the overall length, then we can use this the bar length here. Yeah, so the bar length is measuring from high to low. So um, let's see here. So yeah, I'll just, well, actually now, instead of that, I'll go with the more universal route here. So let me delete that. So I'll just grab another comparison solver. And so this comparison solver will allow us to select whatever prices we want to compare. So we can compare the right the close um, to the open or the open to the close. I mean close to the open or the high to the low. Um, and let's see here. Well, yeah, we can set a minimum body length in ticks. Yeah, actually, probably ticks would be a little better. Yeah, so if you're really looking for some big bars here, we could just say, right, that first, the first thrust bar needs to be at least a point and a half on the ES there. So let me get, let me get these prices set correctly. So let's see, if it is an up pattern, we're going to compare the close to the open. And there. All right. And we need to set the look back to three because we're looking back two bars. 
like so. Oh, there we go. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, it could be this pattern here. Oh, that body was only one point. All right, just to make sure that make sure that this works here, I'll set this down to four ticks. Like so there. All right, I need to mark these bars again. There we go, so that's the signal bar. And that's the signal bar, okay. So I just wanna make sure that we're getting an output on the signal bars here. And we're not getting an output there. Um, let's see. Let's see, oh, right, right. Yeah, again, remember the, uh, the outputs here are, is uh, the output is a right is greater than b. Um, there's no equals in there, so again we need to set this just under four ticks. So if we, if we want to allow four ticks, then we need to set the value just under four ticks. There, there we go. Okay, so now we have an output on here. And so remember, this, this output on this signal bar is coming from the first thrust bar. And we're making sure that the body is at least four ticks in length of, for the body there. So now, let's go back. So what I want to do is go back and find those really small bars that had a signal. Here we go. Yeah, like back here uh, in the overnight session, right? We had really tiny bars here that gave us a signal. So now if we add a, a bar length, a minimum bar size, um, then we can get rid of those signals. There we go. So if we take our solver here and, oh, let's see. Let's, let's name this here. So this is the first thrust bar length there. And so if we connect that in, and there we go. So now that signal is gone. All right. So let's we'll check this again here. All right, there was our really two good, two really good patterns right there. And let's see, yep, there's another good, good pattern. All right, all right, well, yeah, looking back, I've only got three days of data on my chart, but so there's only a couple of patterns in here. All right, so that is the three bar pattern. So. Let's see. All right. Yeah. Albert says this pattern does not count dojis. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. Yeah. So we want to make sure that there's no doji. Yeah. We can take, we can yeah, add even more conditions to this. So we can take this um, first thrust bar length and um, we can take it and also have it check, um, check the, the doji, the middle bar. Sorry, the middle bar. Yeah, so let's see here. Uh, so I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the solvers tab here and I'm gonna make a copy of this bar. And so, all right. So we'll have this solver check the middle bar length. Um, and we'll make sure that it's at least one tick, has a body of at least one tick. So 0.9 uh, will find a body of one tick. So, um, 
there. And let's see here. And this, yeah, the middle, the middle candle is in the opposite direction. So I need to reverse the prices here. There. All right, that should do it. And so let's put that new solver on the board here. So going to existing nodes and then grab that middle bar length. And let's just check it out. So here we go. Yeah, doji. Um, there's a doji. And let's see what happened here. Um, hmm, let me double check my, oh. Um, I need to change the look back period there. Um, that's what I'm doing wrong. Sorry. Both of those look back periods need to be the same length. There we go. Jeez. Okay. There, 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 there. All right. Yeah. So remember where there's no output, remember it's looking back one bar to the middle bar. So this doji, the output from the doji gets, is shifted forward one bar. So remember we have a look back period of two here. So there you go. There's no output on this doji, no output here for that doji. So, yeah, let's see what else we have. Yeah, here we go. So, um, we have two dojis right there, and then the following two bars, no output. There. So, we can confirm this. Um, yeah, let's confirm this. Yeah, here we go. Here's one of them. There, right? So that's a doji in the middle there. And so if we take this middle bar length, connect it in, there we go. It goes away. So that signal went away. And let's we can check that other spot as well. Um, Yeah, here we go. Here is the overnight session. And again, the middle bar is a doji. And so if I connect this back in again, there we go, signal's gone. All right, so there we go. So we have two, two solvers here verifying bar lengths, you know, to tighten down the requirements even more, right? So it makes the, yeah, makes the uh, bar pattern even more tighter or more restrictive there. All right, so that is the three bar pattern. So now we let's move on to the four bar pattern. Um, so the beginning is the same. So we can make a, essentially we're gonna like copy, copy most of this three bar pattern. So we'll make a copy for the beginning part, <clears throat> um, right? And then, but then we'll have to add some additional length checks so we can see that the the, uh, uh, the third bar in our pattern, it, it's an up bar, but it's supposed to be slightly shorter than the down bar, right? Same thing for the down pattern, right? So our um, third bar here is supposed to be slightly shorter than the second um, bar, right? So we'll have to do that <clears throat> and then make sure that we have two bars, two two up bars or two down bars, right, um, before the final thrust bar. So we just yeah need to add this extra middle bar in into the pattern there. So let's see here. Let's. So what I'm going to do is, if I wanted to, I could just start connecting. You know, some of these requirements here. 
<clears throat> into another AND node, right? But it can get kind of messy looking. You know, it can look like a bowl of spaghetti if, if you have too many leaders going around. So to clean it up, just, just purely for, you know, keeping it visually looking clean without a lot of leaders, what I'm going to do is make, um, I'm going to put these solvers on here twice, um, right? So it's not a copy of the solver. It's going to be the same solver, but we're just going to see it visually on the board twice. So let me go to, let me scroll over a little bit there. So I can go to my existing nodes. Um, and let's see, what do we want here? Yep, that one, that one. So basically I'm just kind of copying <clears throat> um, copying, you know, some of the logic here. I'm just making it a, a duplicate here. All right, so there's the bar directions. Um, oh, and actually, yeah, actually this does need some modifications here. So the bar direction that needs to be reversed is actually going to be the second bar back. Um, yeah. Right. So you might notice here that, right, for the three bar pattern, we were reversing one bar back. Um, so let's pull up the screenshot, right? So on the three bar pattern, when, right, when we're on the, the signal bar, we're only looking back one bar for the down bar. But here on the four bar pattern, when we get to this the signal bar, we're actually looking back two bars. And we need to reverse the bar direction um, going back an extra bar there. So, yeah, so I had to s swap or basically reverse uh, the second bar back, not you know, where, as opposed to the three bar pattern, which was the first bar back there. Okay. Um, and let's see, we need um, another bar direction in here. So we're, we need to look back now to a third bar back there. All right, so the third bar back, the the one bar back, and the current bar, those are all going to be in the same direction. Right again, looking at our image, right? So we have an up bar, and an up bar, and an up bar. So we have three bars, right, in the same direction, and we only need to we only need to reverse the direction of 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 the um, uh, second bar back there. So. There. All right, so we have that. Um, yeah, I think that's really, that's all that's usable, isn't it? Um, yeah, okay, I'm going to, yeah, take a little uh, <clears throat> shortcut here. So this solver here, um, so let's take a step back. That solver there, <clears throat> it was comparing, um, so for the three bar pattern, right, it's comparing the length going two bars back to one bar back. On the four bar pattern, right, it's basically one extra bar backwards in time, right? So we, we still need to do the same kind of length comparison, but it's just an extra bar back because we have this extra short, you know, up bar um, in the middle here. So we're actually just looking back an extra bar. So, so what that means is I can actually use this solver here let me grab a um, let me grab it again put it there and let me shorten the name here there I'm gonna shorten the name a little bit <clears throat> and if you notice right when I when I change the name on this one it also changed the name on this one back here right because they're the same 
object. They're the same node. You modify one, it modifies the other. Right? They're not copies of each other. They're the same one. So if we go to our solvers list, um, it's this solver here, right? And there's only one of them on this list. So there's no copy of it. So if I modify, right? So if I modify one object, I'm modifying um, the other one. Um, so just be mindful of that. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do is take this and then I can use a look back uh, node and again, what I want from this lookback node is the displacement function, right? So basically what I've just done is, right, I've taken this thrust bar, you know, length compared to the down bar length, and I've I've taken the output and shifted it forward an extra bar, right? Because we have this extra bar in the middle. So I've just taken the output from this, from this logic, from this solver, and shifted it forward one extra bar onto the signal bar, right? Since we have this extra bar in the middle, I need to, I need to push that signal forward one extra bar onto the final signal thrust bar, right? So again, that's, that's what. So from, from the look back node, that's what this displacement, leaving this displacement at one basically takes this, you know, takes this condition and shifts it forward one extra bar. So, um, all right, yeah, so that saved, that saved a little bit of work. Um, and let's see, next, um, I'm sorry. This solver was not comparing lengths. Sorry, this this solver was sorry. This solver was making sure that the the body prices were equal. It was making sure that the prices were equal. Yeah, prices were equal there. Yeah. So now we need another solver here that's making sure that the middle two body prices are equal. So that'll take a new yeah. We'll need a new solver for that. So let's see here. Let's. Oh, and let me. I need to change the name even further. So that's right. We modify this to look at the body. So we're actually looking at the close, comparing the close price and making sure it's equal to the open price. So there we go. Let's modify that name there. All right. So let's grab another. Comparison solver. I'll connect that in. And let's see here, let's pull this up again. So we're comparing the open to the close price. Open price to the close price. Yeah. All right. So input A, that'll be the open open and then input B that will be our close <clears throat> and we are let's see that's looking back three bars or well two bars but a look back period of three and this needs to look back one extra bar so that's a look back period of two all right, let's double check. So we want the signal and the thrust bar. So we're, uh, it's, so this, the thrust bar is a look back period of one, so two and three, so yeah. So there we go. Um, and we want to make sure that those prices are equal. So let's change the outputs there. So we're using the equals A equals B output. So, um, all right, let's just see where we're at here. Let's take a look and see if um, we might have any patterns. Um, let's see. Uh, no, that doesn't count. Yeah. 
Yeah, remember our, our logic doesn't have any bar lengths yet, so we're just purely looking at the bar directions. All right. Yeah, so, you know, it's kind of looking at this, right? We have a down bar, then we have an up bar, and we have a down bar, and then another down bar. Um, so, yeah, I mean, so far, I think, I think we're on the right track. But we need to add, we need to add the rest of the bar length, the bar length comparisons, right? So that way we're getting the correct pattern. Um, yeah. All right, let me put a name in here. Uh, there. All right. So that solver is done. It's all named. So now let's add in um, the length comparisons, comparing the lengths here. Um, let's see. So I think, yeah, I think we can take this solver here. Um, yeah, we can use this one again. I'm not sure if we can use this one again. So, let, yeah, let me grab a make a grab a uh, a duplicate of that let's see that is this one here we go mm -hmm. and again this this one was set up for the three bar pattern so <clears throat> its displacement right wasn't quite back far enough um <clears throat> so if I remember this this comparison solver you know, it was checking the length of the first thrust bar to the middle bar, right? So it's going to be same thing, the first thrust bar to this middle bar, but there's an extra bar in the middle now, so we need to shift the signal one bar forward extra, you know, just like what we did here, right? We had to use this displacement. So let's grab another look back. Connect that up, connect that in. Yeah, let me name this again. All right, so that there's that. All right, so that was comparing the length of the first thrust bar to the middle down bar. Now we need to compare the the middle down bar to the middle up bar. Um, right, so we can see that there's their their lengths are um, going to be um, yeah, slightly slightly different. Uh, I don't think we probably don't need to use chameleon and the ATR to analyze this. Um, you know, I'm going to guess that probably this distance only needs to be one tick shorter, right? There's probably no stringent requirement for this middle up bar, you know, as to how much shorter it needs to be. It's probably just one tick or something like that would be my guess. So we'll make, we'll leave it, we'll make, we'll design this so it's a little more liberal and we'll just make sure that there's a one tick difference between the, the bottom of these bodies here. And, um, yeah, so let's see, we can do that um, using a comparison solver here. And let's see, Albert says that's correct. Okay, good. All right, good, good. So let's, um, so grabbing a comparison solver. Let's see. Again, we want to set set the input types to price. Price. And so let's see. Input A. That'll input A. Let's go back. Input A. That'll be our down bar here. Right? So that's gonna be an extra bar back. So that's gonna be the close. And so we're comparing the close to the open close and then we set input B to the open and our look back period is going to be three and two and we actually need input A to be less um, <clears throat> right so if we look at this um, the close is going to be less all right, it's going to have a smaller price than the open, 
right the open here is going to have a greater price a higher price or greater price um and let's see yeah vice in the reverse here for the down pattern so all right so let's see here yeah so um we are going to reverse the outputs here you know because we want a so remember a a is our down bar right it's looking back three bars so that needs to be less than b all right so again a input a is the down bar <clears throat> input b is the up bar here in the middle so Yes, we want to reverse these outputs here, like so. And um, let's see. Yeah, we can leave the difference alone because it it says a less than b or a greater than b. There's no equal there. So um, yeah. All right. Let's let me name this here. the effect, the, the result that we're getting from this comparison solver is we're actually, yeah, kind of checking the, the lengths here, checking the lengths in kind of a, um, a, a roundabout way uh, and using an alternate way. All right, so let's, let me check the chart here. Um, Mm, that is awful difficult to to check. So I'm gonna make myself a little aid here, a little visual aid. So I'm gonna take. Uh, let's see what do I want. Uh, yeah, I think I want that, and that, and that. So what I'm doing is I'm taking these bar directions in here. I'm adding these bar direction requirements <clears throat> into my little check here because I know that, you know, when I'm when I'm looking at this image here, you know, I know I'm looking for a down bar and an up bar, um, and so adding the bar directions will help me visualize this a little easier. It's going to be a little easier on me. Um, so let's see, yeah, down bar and an up bar. Perfect. Yeah, see, that made it a lot quicker to check here. So here we go. So we got a down bar and then an up bar, and we can see the up bar is one tick, right? There's a one tick difference. And of course, we're getting the signal on the next bar, which, you know, this was supposed to be the thrust bar, right? Remember, if we, uh, the solvers are set up to give us to give us the signal on the thrust bar, right? So our pattern is is two is is you know a bar back. So our signal is going to be in the thrust bar. Same thing here, right? Our our, our output is going to be on the thrust bar from this this pattern here. So yeah, so so this so we're checking these two prices, but we're getting the output on what would be the thrust bar ultimately. Yeah, so looking back here, there we go, down bar, up bar, right? The open is slightly higher, and we're getting along there. So, all right, and let me see if I can find any short signals. Yeah, here we go. So let's, let's look at this. Um, so, yeah, okay, up bar, down bar, and, <clears throat> right, the open is one tick less than the up bar and then we're getting the short same thing over here here we go so up bar down bar and then we get this the short signal and those prices are offset by right by one tick right so up bar down bar and right if we go to our our image here right up bar and then down bar 
right? The price is, the open is offset at least by one tick and then the signal is on what should be the thrust bar. So there, okay, so I know we're on the right track. There we go, so let me get rid of that AND node. I don't need that anymore. So let's connect that in there. All right, so we have the, we have two lengths checked. So we have the first thrust bar length compared to the down bar, and now we have the down bar or opposite bar direction length compared to the bar in the direction of the signal. So now we just need to um, add in this last bar length check, right? So we need to, ch to check the final, the signal bar length to, right, to the uh, middle bar here. And um, I'm wondering, let's see, I think we can just use, I think we can use this solver that we have over here. Let's see. Yeah, I think so. Let's, we'll grab it and test it out. And I guess let's also grab um, yeah, let's see. Yeah, this solver here is checking the thrust bar's closed length. Um, yeah, let's throw that in for good measure too. There. We're almost done. The only thing left um, is to, yeah, we have this one solver here that's making sure that the middle bar um, is not a doji. Yeah, middle bar length. So we're checking that middle bar length to make sure it has at least a one tick length so that we don't have any dojis. Um, so yeah, I guess why not? This is Throw that in as well, middle bar length. Yeah, there. So this solver here, you know, what's it doing? Well, it's looking, remember it has a look back period of two. So it's looking back one bar and it's comparing the open to the close and make sure that the open to the close is at least has a, a difference you know, of at least one tick. Um, so what would what would that be on the four bar pattern? Well, that would be this the the second middle bar, right? Yeah, that or the last middle bar. It would be this last middle bar. So we know that if this if this last middle bar has at least a body of one tick, then we also know that the first middle bar will be at least two ticks. Because remember, we did this price comparison here. here. So we're making sure that these prices here are at least one tick difference. So if this is not a doji, then that means this can't be a doji either. Um, there. So here's the middle bar length. And we'll connect that in. And that should do it. I think that'll do it. Let's go to the chart and see, see if anything's found. Now I'm gonna need some more data on my chart for sure. Hmm, this is probably Friday to sun Sunday, yeah. Still nothing. Uh, let's change instruments. Um, there we go. Get everything rolled over. Hmm. 
Oh, there we go. Merge is turned off. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. September 17th at 6.30 a.m. All right. What time zone there, Albert? Central. All right. So that'd be um, 5.30. Okay. And let's see. Also, what instrument? Uh, I've been changing instruments around. So let's see. Well, what instrument was that? Yes. Okay. Let's go back to the ES. Let's go back to the ES. I'm not sure if this is what you're talking about. I mean, uh, it looks close, but that's not a down bar. Um, one of those middle bars is, they're both up bars. Well, anyways, let me, yeah, let me uh, disconnect. Let's disconnect this middle bar one here as recommended. There we go. All right. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. <clears throat> um, let's see. September, yeah, six thirty Central. Um, yeah, that would be in this area here. Hmm. Um, let's see here. All right, well, Albert says it's working for him. Good, all right. Let's see, oh, okay, so Albert's using the high and low of the bar. <clears throat> um, yeah, I'm fairly confident that everything should be working. Should be working fine, but that's definitely gotta be a, a more difficult pattern to find. Um, all right, so yeah, we'll just kind of leave it where it's at. Um, and uh yeah let's see here let's let's just kind of open this up and review this again here um yeah so maybe using the candle bodies might be a little might be a little more restrictive in finding the pattern um you know so again it, uh, guys if you want to you know if you want to modify this to use the high and the to use the wicks of the candles, right? Then you just need to go in here and change the prices um, from the close and open, you know, change those prices to the highs and lows of, of the candles, right? And that'll convert this all over to using the wicks instead of the body um, of, of the bars, yeah. So, and so, okay, so next, the last final stage um, is we need an OR node. And if we want to see both of these patterns at the same time, we just need an OR node. And let's take this one, move it down a little bit, like so. Connect them both into an OR node. And that way, now we can see both patterns. We can see signals from both patterns. So let's call this there, there. All right, so we have the three bar pattern and we have the four bar pattern and we can see they're pretty close. You know, the only uh, real differences here um, is, um, you know, we have a few extra solvers and this, this you know, this isn't exactly correct, but in, in this middle area, we have some extra solvers because we have four bars instead of three bars. So we had to um, yeah, inject um, some extra solvers here, looking back, you know, one extra bar, you know, to make up for that four bar pattern versus the three bar pattern. So, yeah. There, all right. Yeah, and of course, also the bar directions 
So we had to add an extra bar direction as well. Uh, check for the four bar pattern. So, yeah. There.